Hello, this is Craig, and this is part two of our space battle game tutorial, how to program it. We're going to do particle effects this episode. We may get to the throttle system, but it depends on how fast we can do the particle effects, because a good particle effect is really uh, going to make your game pop. So first step is to import the standard asset particles, and these are available for free. So just go ahead and import them, and don't underestimate these particles. Uh, if they had a jet, I would be using it. They don't. This is the closest thing they've got. A flame. Unfortunately, it's not anywhere even vaguely like what we need. Um, it just kind of is vaguely similar, I guess. We could try and adjust the flame so that it fits our need, uh, but actually that's not going to work because a jet has a very short lifetime particle, whereas a flame has a very long lifetime particle. So we're going to delete that. And we're going to create our own. So one of the tricks to a particle system is, is understanding that, generally speaking, you're going to put them out in pairs. So this one is going to be our primary jet. And it's just going to be the blue part, you know, the part where it's um, uh, going to be looking like an actual flame of jet. So uh, we need to adjust the emission shape so that it is, uh, you know, something like this but we're going to drag it to the back of the ship and we're going to start to adjust these stats so that they make sense. So as I said, the jet is a very low lifetime, high speed particle. Um, it's going to be calculated in world space so that it remains behind when we turn. Otherwise, if we turn, it turns with us. That would be weird. Um, we need to change the emission rate to much higher. No, not that high. There we are. And I'm just going to adjust the max particles, although we probably won't need it. So the first step to making it look like a jet is to change the color, not the color by speed, the color by time, the color by time so that it ends as transparent, like this. And you can see that it already looks a little bit like a jet, but it's not very convincing. So how can we make it, in, how can we make it convincing? Well, one thing we could do is we could steal one of these uh, particle materials to make it so that it's not quite so, so jetty. Uh, that one's obviously not correct. Um, ooh, that one's kind of interesting. Actually, that one might work just fine. Uh, which one was that? That was Sparkles 1. We're going to use our rainbow sparkles. But they're not going to be rainbow. They're just going to be, I guess, yellow. There we go. All right. Um, so how does that look in actual play? That looks pretty good, but we're going to need another one. So just duplicate that, and we'll call it Secondary Jet. And this one is going to be the uh, um, the little brother that just gives us the sharper uh, uh, punch. It gives us it gives us the the core, and then you've got the surrounding not so core elements. Um, so we actually need them to be the same. Due to the fact that we're going to be traveling at high speeds, we actually do need to have them at the same start speed, um, which is something I keep forgetting. Uh, but we can have them with different lifetimes and different sizes. So let's go ahead and change this one to a different size. But now it's completely overwhelming our base jet, which is fine. We'll just go ahead and change the material to something neutral like dust. And we'll change this to be white. So now it works, but it's completely obscuring our core stream. Uh, now there are lots of ways to make it so it doesn't completely obscure the core stream. Um, and one of the basic ways is to change it so that the particle effects don't interfere with each other. Uh, but in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to have a look and see how it plays in the game itself. And you can see that the that the uh, uh, how it looked in the actual uh, scene view is not how it looks when it's actually running. When it's actually running, they shine through each other just fine. But this is not uh, a very good smoke effect because it's always the same size. So let's change the size over lifetime. This is a simple graph that you can adjust this to be however you adjust this, adjust to be however you'd like. Uh, let's go ahead and make it like this, and you can see that we now have something like particles, but we don't want to start it at zero. Let's start it like like this. Let's actually give it a big hump. So move this down here and put one here. I just double clicked to add a new spot. There we are. All right, so that looks vaguely like a jet, don't you think? So the other element of this jet that we haven't yet done anything with um, 
is actually I'm gonna move this smoke just forward just a little bit here yeah there we go the other element of this jet that we haven't done anything with is the light so let's go ahead and create a light now uh, point lights work great for this uh, so do spotlights it really depends on what your preference is uh, we're gonna use a point light and we're gonna move it to the right spot here uh, the right spot being in this case slightly behind where the actual particle effect is um, now depending on whether you have pro or not you might you might not be able to do shadows uh, all you should be able to for your main directional light you should always be able to do shadows I shouldn't complain at all but with point lights and such if you try and do shadows it's gonna say uh, it's gonna say oh you can't do that because you don't have the right render mode you're not pro you're not pro enough that's okay don't worry about it I'm gonna go ahead and turn the shadows on because I am pro enough uh, yeah that's right I buy unity pro uh, that makes me all sorts of special um, but we don't need it to have this level of range uh, a range of three is plenty uh, we're gonna go ahead and up the intensity to five and uh, that's really all we could do all sorts of cool stuff we could add some flares let's go ahead and see how it looks first so you can see that the back of the ship is now lit up if we were to decrease the intensity of the primary light then that would be the primary light source on our ship uh, once we give our ship some topology uh, you know an actual blender file that's gonna look really really nice uh, so we'll put it in now um, but we're gonna actually restore the light to 0.5 uh, we don't need it to be dark so well, let's talk about flares. Flares are a controversial subject. Um, a lot of people like them. For example, the most recent Star Trek movie had uh, roughly 18,476,918,000, I counted, uh, and some odd change. So uh, if you do want flares, rather than trying to build your own... What's this? There's a default flare library. There's a default library for everything. And also, you can buy them real cheap in the store. Uh, there are flare packs, because um, these are pretty uh, pretty mediocre. Uh, unlike the particle systems, these aren't, these aren't so fantastic. But let's go ahead and just drag a small flare on, see how that looks when we hit play. So I can't even see it. Did I screw this up? I may have screwed it up. Hold on. Well, yeah, I screwed it up. That's the directional light. There we go. So now you can see that we have a really, really obvious flare attached to that light. And we may actually want to move that light closer to the ship if we're going to be using these flares. Now, normally I wouldn't recommend using flares, but if you're using Unity Basic and you don't have shadows, or if you're running on a mobile device, these flares are invaluable. Um, a mobile device doesn't often have... You don't want to waste the mobile device's time on actually doing a point light. So what you do is you would take this point light down to zero, and you just make the point light go away. Um, sorry, you take the range down to zero, and then all you would be doing is you'd use the intensity to determine the flare strength. So you could get away without having any light, actual light, being ray casted onto the scene. You wouldn't have to worry about the expense of that, and you could just use the uh, uh, the, mo the, the uh, flare to uh, to simulate that. You just have to make sure that we turn off shadows. You just have to worry about whether or not, if it's inside the ship, you can't see it anymore because it's no longer the thing on top. And, eh, you're going to have to worry about that a lot. But positioning these lights is always going to be a pain in the butt. So for now, I'm actually going to go ahead and use the flare or rather than the light. Later on, we can toggle back and forth between them and see which one we like best. So we've just spent like 10 minutes creating a particle effect. Um, the next step is going to be making it so that particle effect reacts to the propulsion of the ship. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to go into ship, pull up the ship script. That's not it. That is my first program. It's live! You can go watch it on YouTube. Uh, I'm sure you just finished watching it on YouTube. So we're going to need to create some more ship variables. Public light uh, uh, ship light, or uh, uh, engine light. I'm going to make these engine lights. And public particle system engine 
particles. Excuse me. And then we're actually going to change this thrust. Yep, that's right. So uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to make this throttle with an underscore. We're going to make public float throttle. And now we're going to change this into a getter and setter set of things rather than uh, uh, just a, a flat variable. And the reason is because we only need to change the engine lights and engine particles when we actually change the throttle. We don't need to try and update them every single frame. That's, we just let them run as long as the throttle is the same. So we're going to say set. Uh, start with a get. Uh, return throttle. And then we're going to go into the setter. Uh, now, first thing to do when we're doing this is we don't want to waste time if they're setting the throttle to the same thing. So if I actually don't know whether or not this is automatically taken care of. It may be that set doesn't get called if it's the same value. I'll have to check that. If throttle equals, or sorry, if throttle equals value, uh, then return. Don't need to do anything. Otherwise, throttle equals value, and we need to go through all of these. like so. And then down here, what was our emission rate? 100. And then this one was less. Oh, they're both 100. 100 it is. All right, so when we actually start up, we're going to go ahead and say that throttle equals uh, I'll throttle is value, then I return, so that's not going to work now, is it? Um, Let's we'll just go ahead and say that throttle equals negative one, and then we'll say, uh, this is really clunky, I don't want to do it like that. I've forgotten that in order to initialize throttle, we need to. Let's go ahead and. Uh, Make this protected. Yeah. Due to the complexities of whether or not you can set it in the in the scene editor and all sorts of other stuff, um, it's annoying to have to deal with that initial boot up. But that's okay. Um, I'm sure there is a way to make the setter run, uh, but I don't happen to know it off, off the top of my head. So I forgot to actually put them in, didn't I? So our engine light and then our engine particles. And then hit play. So how is that, huh? You can also adjust the start speed if you wanted to really give it some pep. current start speed is 10. It's flashing. Oh, because it's a flare and it's being obscured by the particle effect. I'm not sure that I like that. Well, we can fix that in a number of ways, and they all involve just adjusting where the light is relative to the particles. So, for example, we could move the light up just a notch. Like that. All right, so that was what I wanted to do. Uh, I actually wanted to do more than that in just this one episode, but um, for now, that will have to do, and we will go ahead and next episode... We will make the throttle far juicier and chunkier because my game design involves trading off speed for rotation, um, or rotations, you know, speed of rotation versus speed of forward motion. Um, also, you can adjust this to be however large or small you want relative to the ship. Right now I'm running on the assumption that this is the tiniest of the possible ships, so, uh, you know, larger ships will have um, 
the, the maybe more jets and so on and so forth. And that's all just a matter of adding all that crap into the, into the engine lights and engine particles. Uh, and you can also do a lot of more complicated stuff using uh, 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 scripts if you'd like. So for example, you could put a script on all of those particles and point lights that automatically keeps track of what the defaults were and then adjusts relative to the ship's throttle. You can even use events where you catch it. Um, I don't really feel like doing that, at least not at the moment. So we're going to leave it like this, and I'll see you for episode 3 later on.